Welcome back to All About the Geek. Jason Isaac, the Tyrant Director here, bringing you a quick review of the Yakima's Mini DIY Hand Drill. Now, what exactly is the Yakima's Mini DIY Hand Drill? Well, simply put, it is an electric pin vise. Now, this is a piece of equipment that me from 25 years ago would have killed to have had access to. I hated pinning Devastators. So I'm a Space Marine player, Dark Angels, going back to 1995 when I first got introduced to Warhammer 40k. And I got to tell you, I was at a convention, I don't know, probably 12, 15 years ago, and I had one of my Devastators picked up off the table, dropped, and it blew apart at the seams. Why? Because I hated pinning. I hated the manual process of twisting that stupid little drill bit into the mini so I could put a brass rod in there and secure it better. Now, of course, today, most miniatures are plastic and the multi-part kits coming from Fantasy Flight for Star Wars Legion, coming from GW across all of their lines are phenomenal. But some products still are metal. And sometimes with the very fine pieces of plastic even, it's a good idea to pin. I look at a miniature like Mortarian with those little bits of his robe kind of suspending him up there. I personally would want to better secure those to the base, better secure those to Morty, and a pin is probably the best way to do it. So in a few moments, we're going to take a look at this particular tool and see its limitations and its benefits. At the end of it, I think you'll agree with me that it's a great little device and definitely worth the $20 that I paid for it. Okay, so here we have the Yakima's Mini DIY hand drill. So this is really quite simple. We've got battery. I believe it's a lithium ion battery. We've got the little tube that contains a motor and our bit and the rear part of that tube with the other part of the mechanism and the button. It does come with two batteries and a charger. I'll just show you that right now. So there's the charger and the battery. It's pretty basic, pretty simple. Um, not, uh, definitely not CSA approved for those of you living in Canada where we've got the Canadian Standards Association. Um, but you know, as long as you're not uh, leaving it on while you're out of town for weeks on end, it's probably fine. I just tend to only charge it while I'm in my office, while I'm looking at it. Other than that, it stays stored in the charger um, beside in the drawer beside this. So um, this particular device uh, I bought on a whim because frankly, I really hate um, hand drilling the pieces for when I've got a lot of assembly to do. And I recently bought 10 of the metal uh, battle mechs from Ironwind Metals. They are lovely devices. Now, I honestly, I ordered all of this stuff um, probably in the spring um, of last year uh, before Battletech did their uh, amazing Kickstarter, uh, which obviously now pretty much everything I bought is now available or is now going to be available in plastic. And this is somewhat moot. However, there are still, I still want to assemble these um, and paint them and have them beside the plastic ones. Uh, I don't think they'll be too far different, huh? a little bit of scale difference, I'm sure. But the purpose of this video is to go over how valuable this is compared to say um, the GW equivalent. Where did I put that? Don't you love it? You have the tool, oh, there we go. So of course you've got your standard GW pin vise, um, works hand crank. Um, but I do find when I've got a lot of this to do, I just find it irritating, honestly. Um, so what is the problem with this? Because this is like a $20 US device. Uh, why is this not amazing? Well, for starters, the button is back here. So to do anything, obviously I've got to get this thing spun up beforehand. I'll show you a trick that I have afterwards. Um, being battery powered is not a bad deal. There's actually one about the same price that is not battery powered and rather it's powered via electricity. Uh, they're, both are powered by electricity. It's got a cable to plug in. I do like the portability of having this um, unit not be tethered to a wall. So I think that's a plus. Um, 
it will accept uh, pretty much any bits. It comes with a couple of different collars, collets, whatever. I'm not, uh, I'm a, this one might not actually accept this bit that I was planning on testing with. No, so I'll need a slightly smaller bit, which is fine. Um, you can get additional um, chucks for this. That's one of the reasons that it is fairly cheap is that it doesn't come with a variety of different chuck sizes. So it's limited to how many different um, size bits you can use out of the box. But for my purposes here, that'll work. There's only a slight bit of wobble in that. Um, all right, so using it like anything else. Now, one thing I did find with this particular device is that I really like the idea of center punching these before I uh, go ahead and do this, which is probably a good idea anyway, just because it does want to um, travel a bit. And you can see the center punch does a pretty reasonable job there. I don't know if you'll actually be able to see that. Um, in any case, so here is the trick that I found for using this particular device, which is I'm going to turn it on. And because it's not super high torque, I can actually stop it with just like my knuckle. I can get it in position and then let her go. I don't have that in there tight enough. All right. So I have replaced the bit with one that actually fits in the collet. As I said, it does come with only the one size, so it really only fits one size a bit well. Um, but when you've got that right bit, like I said, I can just use that little kind of, treat it like almost like a pen to block it. And then I'm gonna stick it in where I've center punched it, kind of off center. But the idea is, is that it can very quickly generate the hole that I need. So there you can see, I'll just bring it up to the camera and hopefully it'll focus in. And there, where's it gonna focus? There we go. So you can see it's got quite a bit of uh, filings that it's taken off of there, which is rather nice. And so I think the device is overall pretty good. For 20 bucks, it'll do the job, especially if you're like me and I really, primarily use one size of bit and one size of pin for almost all of my work. If you've got varying sizes, you'll have to buy the different collets, which are pretty easily replaceable. You just have this small Allen key right there, pop that portion off and replace it. So all in all, I think this is a relatively valuable device. Now, one of the things that I'm thinking about, because there's the motor, there's the back side of the battery. So it's pretty simple. My feeling is, and you can see here, that there's the uh, solder point that goes to this. I'm thinking that I might take this and wire up, see if I, because it's the motor's just held in place with those two screws. I'm thinking I'm gonna disassemble this. I'm betting I could fit a button in there. So you'd have your main power back here and then an interrupt switch right here. So you could basically power it off, power it on right here, or even better have a um, temporary on off switch. So it's got power running to it, but for the duration you hold it down, it spins. So that's a project that I'm going to work on later this year, um, which means that if you wanna see that, I highly recommend down below um, you subscribe, and hit the notification button if you want to see that video down the road. All right, so that's my review of the Yakima's Mini DIY Hand Drill. Uh, a great little tool for $20, uh, available at Amazon.com. Uh, links to it, uh, the bits, and the multiple collets will be in the description below. Um, if you like this video, jam that thumbs up button. Um, if you have any feedback, throw that in the comments along with any other tools you think might be worthwhile me checking out. Um, but until next week, remember, work your wonk and keep it geeky.